Hello there and welcome back to another learning series with Mr. Knight. Now today's lesson is on finding volume. And so our objectives for today is to find the volume of liquids. To also learn how to find the volume of regularly shaped objects. And also to find the volume of irregularly shaped objects. And so the first thing I wanted to note, or at least know, is that volume is the amount of space a substance or an object takes up. Also I wanted to note is that to measure volume, we use the SI unit meters cubed. And SI represents the international standards of unit. It's very important for you to note as well is that volume is a three-dimensional measurement. It has three different lengths in it meters by meters by meters otherwise length by length by length the other units that can be used to present volume are centimeters cube and also milliliters a very important point to note at this time is that one ml which is one milliliter is equivalent to one centimeters cube now, to measure the volume of liquids, we use measuring cylinder, otherwise called a graduated cylinder. And so you'll notice some markings, the graduations on the cylinder, in terms of telling you where your measurement will be. And I wanted to note that some measuring cylinder may be graduated differently. And so the spacing between them may have different values. Okay, so please make sure you check that before you start using a measuring cylinder. Now, the next concept I want to look at now is how to measure the volume. How do you read the volume? Now, liquids will have a layer on top of it which we call the meniscus. Now, the meniscus is where you read your measurement from. Where do you read from the meniscus is at the bottom. And you also want to read this at eye level. So make sure you're at eye level to the bottom of the meniscus to check off your volume of liquid. You do not want to measure this from top or from bottom. Those two angles will be incorrect because they will lead to error that is known as parallax error. So you want to avoid that. Always try to keep your measuring cylinder on a steady surface and measure at eye level. Now, to measure the volume of regularly shaped objects, there are some known shapes that we can look at. So we could have our square, for example, or at least our rectangle. And so the same thing applies for both. And so we could measure the volume for our square or rectangle by saying length times width times height. To measure the volume of a sphere, it is 4 over 3 times pi r cube. And R is the radius. To measure the volume of a cylindrical object, then it will be pi R squared times H. And H is the height of that cylinder, and R is the radius of that cylinder. All right, so just to note those um, for your information if you do need to use them. Now, what I want to go into now is to find the volume of irregularly shaped objects measure the volume of irregularly shaped objects it's very difficult to measure the length times the width times the height or even to measure radius for example you have a stone it's very difficult to do all of that because it is not um, regularly shaped and so I'm going to show you th um, two methods in which we can use to measure the volume of this irregularly shaped object and so in method one we are going to pour some liquid into a measuring cylinder and take that measurement. So for example, this measurement is 150 ml. Now the next step is to do is to put this carefully into your measuring cylinder. Notice the volume start to rise. And now our new volume is, is now 200 ml. Now to calculate the volume of this rock, for example, we will have to minus these two values. So we take away the first volume from the final volume and hence we'll have 50 ml for that rock that's a quite easy method to do now our method two will be now 
we use a displacement can or what you call a eureka can what you want to do first is to pour liquid into this can to make sure that the, the liquid will be at a level that all the liquid will start running out and then stop after that you'll place it, you place your measuring cylinder on that can and then you want to do is to insert your object and notice once you insert the object then liquid will start to flow out of that can and once the liquid has flown out now you can actually measure the volume and so there'll be a meniscus and so you're going to read that meniscus and so for example this meniscus may fall on the 100 ml mark now this means that the liquid in the measuring cylinder has a volume of 100 ml because the irregular shaped object will displace the same volume of water now before we leave i just wanted to note the apparatus used in measuring the volume and so we use a measuring cylinder or a graduated cylinder to measure volume of liquid um, liquids generally and we use a displacement can otherwise called eureka can or an overflow can to measure the volume of irregular shape object it is used alongside a measuring cylinder as well now the the eureka can um, previously was made up of made from can but it can also be in glassware all right so at this time we're at the end of the lesson and i definitely will see you soon um, for other lessons so in the meantime keep safe until we meet again